Hey friends, how y'all doing today? Tyra here with Inspired Life, where hearts are inspired to live fully, mind, body, spirit, and even in their parenting. Listen, I'm glad you have decided to join me today, whether catching this live or the replay. You've made a great decision today to tune in. We are in the midst of 21 days. 21 days of purposeful prayer for children. Yes, we are on day 15. So for the last 14 days, we've purposely been praying for your children and mine. How many of you know how crucial it is, how imperative it is, how needed it is for us to pray? Thank you, sweetie, for our children. Oh, the need is so dire y'all. So I'm just obeying what the Lord has called me to do, which is to call a prayer meeting, which is to call a prayer gathering, which is to join the saints in prayer. Because we stand on this promise where two of us touch and agree as touching anything on earth, it shall be done by our father who is in heaven. So that's the truth we're standing on today as we just bombard heaven for 21 days straight on behalf of our children. Now listen, we didn't already pray for the parents too. We did that a whole series, 21 days of purposeful prayer for parents. And we did that over on my Inspired Life page. So if you missed any of those broadcasts, be sure to head on over to my Inspired Life page on Facebook and catch the replays of purposeful prayer for parents. Because I found that kids pretty much are okay, but it is parents who need to get our hearts together, who need our hearts transformed in order to give children the love they need and deserve. It is my assertion that every adult has a responsibility to proactively pour into the lives of children in their circle of influence. So even if you are not a parent, this message is still applicable, right? So every adult has a responsibility to pour into the lives of children, whether it's a librarian. The librarian may or may not have children, but that librarian is sewing daily into the lives of children. Heck, even your son's barber is doing some form while he's cutting your boy's hair of sewing into your son's life. So if all adults would just take up that charge that every interaction that they have with children would be one where they've left a deposit. Oh man, our children would be built up. Our children would be affirmed. Our children would know they were loved and it might save some of us from becoming broken adults, okay? Because most of us adults who are broken is because something were fractured in our childhood. So if we have every adult, we know the old adage, it takes a village to raise a child. And indeed it does. And so if every adult would take up that charge, take up that mantle to proactively and positively pour into the lives of children, man, it would really save um, some adults from unnecessary heartbreak, uh, from some of the mess that we as adults are having to filter through and heal that got fractured in our childhood. Will it um, allow them to come through childhood unscathed? Not necessarily, but it can help to save them from some headache and some heartache. So I thank you friends who are on for joining me in our quest to proactively and positively, hey Robin, pour into the lives of children in our circle of influence. So, so far this week, today we're in Wednesday, God had completely taken over the direction of the broadcast. And I will have to tell y'all, my heart is so heavy right now. Like my heart is hurting. I told you all yesterday that there was something in the spirit. I just felt we needed to sound this call, sound the alarm, let out the battle cry for our boys. I'm telling you that thing was on me something heavy. This morning when I woke up, I woke up to a message on my phone about a family 
whose two sons had been seriously injured. My heart was hurt. And I was like, God, I knew something was going on. So today my heart is so heavy, but I'm just giving thanks to God that he gave us that heads up, that call, and we answered it yesterday in the place of prayer. Also though, I was a little bit mad at God, right? Because I'm like, God, you gave me the burden. I prayed it back to you. Why did this still happen to these two children? I was upset at God. Y'all ever get upset at God? You know, you done prayed a thing and then you still, still see hurt, devastation, calamity or whatever. So really y'all, even today I'm trying to process it and I'm trying to work through it. Um, my heart is a little bit heavy today. So if you see that um, in the course of this video, my countenance is a little bit different. Y'all pray for me because I'm, I'm trying to work through this, but I'm thanking God. I'm thanking God that he at least gave us the heads up yesterday that we needed to sound that battle cry for our boys because sure enough, yesterday of a family I know, two of their sons were injured, okay? So we thank God for giving us um, an opportunity to intercede, to stand in the place of prayer, but still I am asking God, why? Am I the only one who ever asked God why? Because I want to know. I want to know. I want to know God why. We did what you called us to do. We pray. And why did this happen? And, and it doesn't feel good, but I think with the type of relationship that we have with God, we can ask why. We do need to ask God questions. You know, he, he doesn't say you're not allowed to ask why and the Holy Spirit is a comforter. So that's some reassurance that we have is that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. We also have the assurance that the Holy Spirit causes all things to work together for the good. We also have the assurance because we called on him yesterday that Jehovah Gabor, the mighty man of war, contends with those who contend with us. So for this family, I'm standing on that. We also have the assurance that Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, goes before us in battle and that we're victorious. So I'm standing on that for this family and for their two sons. And I thank you for joining me and continuing to pray for this family. But I, 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 I felt it strongly in my spirit and God gave me permission to release it here. And sure enough, I did get some confirmation last night that some stuff had gone down. So... You guys, we, we just bombarding heaven. God has changed the whole trajectory of this week. Monday's broadcast was bananas. It was just straight fire as we learned the weapons of our warfare. So if you missed Monday, be sure to go and catch the broadcast. Yesterday, we did a battle cry for our boys. And today, we are letting out the war room whale for our young women. Yes, today we are praying for our daughters. We're going to be looking at as a foundational scripture, Luke 1 45. If anybody has the ability to type right now, drop that in the comments for me, Luke 1 45. And it reads this, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Blessed your daughters. Okay. You're a daughter. So blessed are you. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will, not he might, not he's thinking about it, not if it's convenient for him. He will fulfill his promises toward her. That's good news for me today. That's good news for you today. And that's good news for all of the young ladies in your circle of influence. God would fulfill his promises toward her. You ladies on the broadcast, when you were a young lady, did you ever have some young man break a promise toward you? You ever have your own daddy not fulfill a promise he made toward you? It can leave you feeling broken. It can leave you feeling jaded. It can leave you feeling dejected. But not God. Not God. Not God. And this is the surety that we want our daughters to have is that he will fulfill his promises toward them because we don't want them going to look for that affirmation, for that fulfillment, 
for that approval. Yep, Faith, thank you. Thank you. I was waiting for somebody to give me an amen on that. We don't want them finding that kind of approval in the, how can I say this? Sweet words. In the charming disposition. In the whispered phone conversations and coded texts between our daughters and the young man. You see, she is going to get, this is our first prayer point today, that our daughters find their affirmation in Christ alone. That our daughters are rooted and grounded in their identity. And it is the father, their natural fathers, that help them to lay that foundation. So any dads watching the broadcast, your daughter gets her identity and is affirmed by you. You lay that foundation, daddy. So if you're not laying that, she is going to go look to the young man for that approval. And surely he's going to whisper his sweet nothings to her because he has his own agenda. But it is our prayer that our daughters will be rooted and grounded with their identity in Christ and being affirmed by their natural father and their heavenly father. So that when he comes along whispering in her ear, she's not given to that. She's like, I know who I am. Yeah, okay, you cool. You all right. I'm all right. And we're going to keep it moving <laughs> because she knows who she is. Okay. Some of the same points we prayed yesterday for our boys, we're also praying for our daughters today. And then we'll get into some of the specifics as related to being a young lady. But we're also praying that she knows she were created in God's image, in his image. She, he made them male and female. So yesterday we talked about our boys embracing their maleness, embracing their male nature and manhood. And that's a good thing. You know, when I was thinking about it last night, I was thinking of another trait of maleness and men naturally are tinkerers. I mean, I think it's part of how God wired them. They can put stuff together, take stuff apart. I mean, even studies of very young children at the elementary school level, boys like blow girls out the water with their ability to manipulate objects for their um, visual, spatial, how they put all this stuff together. Boys are just phenomenal at that. And so last night I was thinking about some of my tinkerers over here and how tinkering, you know, is just a male nature thing. Now, it'll drive a mama crazy with boys and they're tinkering because they like to take stuff apart and put it back together in your house. And you're going like, how did, how did you dismantle this whole thing of mine? And, and they just dismantled it and they think it's fun and cool. So then we moms got to find some opportunities for them to do that male thing of tinkering okay they're also like gatherers right so men are wired to hunt and gather so you know if your boy collects stuff he's collecting um acorns and leaves and coins and trinkets and pockets full of you know you're going to wash your son's clothes and he's got a pocket full of stuff men collect stuff even your grown men, if you're married, you might be going to do your man's laundry and you find his pocket full of stuff because men are collectors and they're gatherers of stuff. Now, I'm the type stuff like that gets on my nerves. And for my little boys, I used to throw their stuff away. Oh, I didn't realize how important that gathering, that collecting and stuff was to them. So, you know, really little ones may gather and collect cars, um, rocks, leaves, sticks, you know, stuff. But when they get older, they still collect and gather stuff. So we have to give them room for some of this male natured stuff, okay? So for our daughters, for them to embrace their femininity. And it doesn't mean you have to be the girly girl. My firstborn, when she was 18 months, she told me straight up, I know like tights. So this is not making, uh, you know, girls fit into this box of, you know, you're going to wear pink and you're going to wear your hair like this. But for them to embrace femininity, um, there's a certain um, <sighs> graciousness. Humility. I mean, you wear it like you're putting on your on your clothes. If you think of 
a female that you admire. When uh, Michelle Obama first got into office, I was just like, oh my gosh, what a beautiful portrait of femininity, right? Because she was just like strong but sweet. You know, she was all these juxtaposition things, you know, like assertive, yet she was, you could tell she was submitted to her husband. You know, it was this perfect balance. She was ladylike, yet, you know, she could give you the mama look, the black mama look too, okay? Um, she was assertive, you know, oh, there were so many things about her. And then I love the way she dressed. She bought back like that old 1960s um, Jackie O A-line dress. Oh, I just loved it because it was just feminine. So just like yesterday, we were encouraging our boys to embrace their malehood, their male nature, because God made them in his image, male and female. We're praying today that our young girls, that our young ladies, that our young women embrace femininity. Even I, y'all, I went through this phase and, and I think it was kind of the times, okay? So when I was in high school in the late 80s, I'm going to date myself here, in the late 80s and early 90s. Y'all remember those baggy pants? They were like 900 sizes too big. So I used to wear the big pants and then I'm from up north. And so, you know, up north, the dress was not feminine at all. It was just very like masculine. The dress, the even the swag, the swagger of young ladies up north was very masculine. Um, so when I came to college, I, I was masculine in that way, in my dress, in my attitude, you know, kind of kind of street edge to it but then I, I met a guy my boo he married to him today by the way and I noticed that all of a sudden I was feminine um my mannerisms my behavior maybe I was trying to show off a little bit maybe it was just the pheromones I don't know what it was but I began embracing you know all things femininity is that sweet Siobhan and so today sometime I marvel um, and my daughter one day she said to me mommy you're such a lady and I thought that was so funny because I never thought of myself like feminine and ladylike and then that's so funny today I happened to be wearing this very feminine like old style shirt <laughs> I'm even laughing at myself when I think about it because I never used to be the type that thought I was very feminine but today I embrace that. I love that about me. And then I love chivalry. Listen, open my car door, take the trash out. I'm not doing trash. I'm not mowing lawns. I mean, I do a lot of work, but some of that ain't one, ain't none of none of that stuff. I am going to be a lady. And I, as a result, we talked about our boys yesterday, am raising up boys who are going to treat me like a lady. My 12-year-old son, he is awesome with that he's always serving looking for what he can do to help his mama so he is in the making to be someone's um great husband there so just for our daughters to embrace femininity that it's beautiful you know and that they should just embrace their female nature because you know ladies it's a whole lot of power in that female nature now we talked about the boys yesterday in some of their role but can we say this? The man, I heard this saying before, the man might be the head, but what is a head without a neck? It don't know which way to turn, to the left or to the right. It would be stiff neck. Oh, he would be a stiff neck without, without the neck. So, ladies, we are powerful, but we have to use our power for good. And we have to train our daughters that they're not going to use their power of influence nor their power of seduction, okay, to lead the young men astray. No, she's going to utilize her strength and her power for good and not for evil. In the, in the Bible in Titus 2, we also see that the older women are supposed to teach the younger women. So ladies on the broadcast, we have a responsibility to be training our girls up in the way that they should go, to be teaching them to manage affairs of heart and home, to be teaching young girls how to nurture children, how to take care of home. This is our duty. And if you have any young women right in your circle of influence, I pray that you do that. Even my cousins served in that capacity for me. 
my mother wasn't always available or present because of her own issues, but my cousins. So one cousin taught me, you know, like, this is how you care for your body. Cause I was living with my dad. He didn't really know. He's like, I, you know, I can do the best I can, but I'm not a woman. I can't tell you what to do with that. He was awkward. And so my cousins, you know, this is how you take care of yourself as a woman, even basic things like these are how to take care of your bras. Like if nobody teaches you that, if nobody tells you, look, you can't wear the same bra every day, you know, but these are things we take for granted, but these are things we have to train young women up. And if we don't train them up when they're young in it, they won't know. And maybe nobody's trained us up and we're like, oh, is that what we're supposed to do? We got to be training them up, y'all, in the way that they should go. They should know how to cook. Come on. Now, I'm not saying every young girl is going to be a housewife, but your girls should know at least how to go in that kitchen and burn a little bit. And I'm not talking burn, burn the pots. I'm talking burn and getting in, cook y'all some food. Even at eight, she can be learning how to cook. Come on, help me somebody. We have to be training our, chill, our, our girls and how to manage the affairs of the home. If we look at the Proverbs 31 woman, she was a business owner. She was industrious. She was attentive. Her household lacked nothing, okay? Because she was on the case making it happen. And so these are things we have to teach our girls. We have to teach them how to be prudent and good stewards with their money. So you got to make sure you're doing that in order to teach them that. We have to teach our young girls how to pray and intercede for themselves and others. We know women hold it down in the price of prayer. Y'all know that. So we got to be teaching our girls how to reach in there, get that word that they've hidden out of their hearts and call it out when they need it for such a time as this. We got to teach them how to clean up. When I was a little girl, my cousin came over that house because my mother didn't make me clean. My mother was kind of passive, so she didn't make me clean up. And my cousin, I can remember one time, Marie, God bless her. She might jump on the broadcast. Marie came to my house. She took that broom underneath that bed and pulled all that trash from under there. And she's like, a young lady does not live like this. But it took a young woman to call me out, a cousin who was Close enough in age that you respected, but old enough to check you. Y'all probably had one of them cousins in your life. And that was mine. A young lady doesn't live like this in filth. She might have said some other choice words to me too. And I got that message loud and clear. I was about nine and I remember it vividly to this day. <laughs> Faith, listen. We, we assume they know certain things, right? And they may not know, or they may have forgotten, or they may be a little bit distracted, but we have to continually reinforce these things. And then in the, in the preteen, prepubescent years, oh, it can get a little trying, but we will stay there with our girls and we will see them through to what God has called them to do. Yesterday, we also, um, we talked again about that Eddie James song we had listened to the day before. That song, the name of Jesus is lifted high. And in it, it says what the word of God says, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So we're speaking that over our daughters today. We want our daughters to be reminded that they are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that they were called out of darkness into the marvelous light. You know, when I was a kid, girls, um, there might have been like one mean girl, but there weren't whole groups and cliques of mean girls. And girls were girls, they didn't act like the boys. These days, girls are the aggressors, you know, when it comes to going after boys in relationships. Girls are fighting, some of them even worse than the boys. The girls have taken a turn, y'all. So we are praying for them to be recovered, for them to be restored, and for them again to find beauty in their femininity and to not feel this pull and this draw and this um, beckoning. 
for the things of the world, but for them to be rooted and grounded in Christ. We're praying for them to flee sexual immorality, that God made them male and female, and for them to flee sexual immorality, anything that is an abomination in the eyes of God. Amen. And a lot of this women, so yesterday I couldn't speak too much to the to the male point and what the dads could do for the boys. But since I'm a woman, I could talk about the woman part. So I have two daughters and four sons. So as a mother, the greatest thing I can do is model for them what I am expecting them to do. So my 10 year old tells me the other day, 10 year old girl, mommy, you work so hard for the family. And I said, thank you so much for noticing. In what ways do I work hard for you? And then she could just list it all. And they were things directly out of that Proverbs 31 woman. Traits that she sees, that she knows. And traits that I'm passing on to her that she can emulate. How to pray for her family. How to war in the place of prayer for her family. How to take care of the affairs of heart and home. How to nurture people. How to love people. How to be compassionate. How to be understanding. How to have a level of sensitivity. These are all things she's observing from me. So women, let us be role models in the lives of young ladies that God has in our circle of influence and not only our children, but in the lives of other children. When I was growing up, my mother was an addict. So she was like, you know, kind of in and out of the home. But this is what I, one of the things I remember most about my mom is my mom had a community of girlfriends that were the bomb.com. Um, my mother spent a lot of time with her friends. And then we would all be together. So like the kids would be doing one thing and all the grown-ups would all be together. And of course, I'd be ear hustling and watching. And then it was a time where, you know, kids had to mind kids business and get out of grown folk business and go in another room. But, you know, I was always kind of looking and watching and watching these women interact. But there was always some mommy friend, some auntie in the larger community who was also pouring into you. It wasn't just your mother. So perhaps in not only serving your daughters in the larger community, girls are watching you. They're observing you. They're observing you interact with their children. They're observing you interact with them. So pour into their lives when you are in, con in connection with other young women, okay? So we are praying, we are praying, we are praying for our daughters today. We're letting out this war room well for our daughters, that they have their identities rooted and grounded in Christ, that they embrace femininity, that they will be the persons God created them to be, that they will be called out of darkness into his marvelous light, that they will refrain from sexual immorality and some other things we're gonna pray here in just a moment. Some character traits of women in the Bible who were beautiful, who were beautifully arrayed, who were obedient to God, who were courageous. Oh my goodness. These women of the Bible are amazing. And we're going to pray the same thing over our girls in just a minute. So let's just go back to our foundational scripture for just a moment. Luke 1 45. And it says this, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Okay. For today's scripture, I actually, I mean, today's prayer, I actually wrote it out. So I want to read it um, directly to you guys so that I don't miss any of these points. Um, and, and again, you guys keep the two boys in prayer that I mentioned earlier. Um, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you are a good, good father. You are the good shepherd who guides us and who protects us and who protects our children. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us as we lead them in paths of truth and righteousness for your namesake. It is only by your power and by the revelation of the Holy Spirit that we can effectively parent and shepherd our daughters. So thank you, God, for seeing each of our girls for seeing every little girl on the planet. You are intimately acquainted with everything concerning them. 
For a time such as this, you have called your girls forward. Thank you for trusting us as we steward them with the traits of the Proverbs 31 women. Confirm for our girls that you see them and you love them with an everlasting love. For any little girl that's been wounded, remind her that you see her, that you care for her, that you love her, and that there is a balm in Gilead which heals her. Reassure her that she is the apple of your eye and a jewel in your crown. May she see her self-worth and see herself clothed in beauty, in majesty, and in splendor. May she seek to honor you in her temple by pursuing purity, by eating foods which are nourishing, and by exercising her body. May our daughters be discerning like Abigail to know that there is a time and place for everything under the heavens. May our daughters be judicious and wise like Deborah. May our daughters be women of the word like Hannah. Through our own example, let us show our daughters how to be hospitable like the Shunammite woman. Oh God, may they be faithful like Ruth and courageous like Esther. May they don obedience and gentleness as garments of praise. Thank you, God, that your plans for them are for good and not of evil. May they discover their purposes early and walk in it at a young age and not despise their youth. And when the lures of this world seek to steal their attention, Father, may you keep them in perfect peace by their minds being stayed on you. Thank you, Lord God, for cloaking them in your favor, for covering them in your blessing and for giving them a shield which deflects all the fiery darts of the enemy. Holy Spirit, move in their lives and assure them, God, assure them, assure them, assure them that your promises toward them are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So I thank you ladies for joining me today and you gents for our 21 days of purposeful prayer for children. This whole week, it is all about the war room. So we are warring this week. Monday, we broke it open with getting our weapons of warfare, our spiritual weapons Tuesday, we prayed for our boys. Wednesday here, we're praying for our girls. And tomorrow, we will be praying for our children's bodies. Do you not know that the body you have is where the temple of the Holy Spirit resides and that you are not your own and that you're called to glorify God in your body? We know that for ourselves, but we want our children to embrace that truth too. So tomorrow, we're going to have a special guest on a nationally known wellness coach, and she's also a mom of three. So she's going to be coming to share with us. She's passionate. She is an awesome, awesome woman of God. She is a prophet of God. She is an amazing woman. So she is coming on tomorrow to pray for them in that area. So I pray that you will join me and we will be on tomorrow at 1230. So make sure you mark your calendar to join us tomorrow for our 21 days of purposeful prayer for children. Thank you all for joining me. As always, it has been my prayer that you've been inspired to live fully. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.